Alright, what's up guys? Agent here again with a uh, kind of addendum to uh, basically all our Magic DPS videos. Uh, so LZH uh, did a couple of testing. Uh, I believe it was also Lyco and uh, Lindent. Lindent. I, I'm sure I'm butchering the name, uh, but it's another EU player. Um, and they were basically looking at Thief versus the Apprentice. Um, we kind of, pretty much all, the, all of us, uh, LZH, Lyco, all of us, myself included, kind of rushed to the conclusion that Apprentice was going to be better than the Thief um, in this patch. Um, LZH has already released a video kind of addressing this, uh, but I figured I should also make a video as well because a lot of my Magic DPS videos were recorded uh, before we figured this out. Um, and so uh, instead of basically remaking all, <laughs> re-recording all of my Magic DPS video, I'm just going to do this video right here, which basically is going to say this. The Thief is going to be better than The Apprentice when it comes to Magic DPS. Uh, yes, you heard that right. The Thief is now back on top again. We are now right back to where we were uh, in Morrowind uh, when everybody was running The Thief. And this particular spreadsheet, and I will have a link down in the description below for you guys uh, so you guys can actually play around with it yourself to see whether or not Thief is best for you or not. Uh, kind of demonstrates that. Uh, so this is basically a, a copy, uh, so to speak, of um, basically what LZH does um, in order to, to, basically the math that LZH did to figure out that, and yes, Thief actually is better than The Apprentice in pretty much every single scenario here. Uh, so uh, quick, just a quick rundown on to what uh, this is all going down. So you can see here I divided it up into four different columns here. So this first column is your magical pool. So uh, you can see here we have attributes. Uh, so we have 64 points into Magicka. So if we change this, so let's say I have like, I don't know, 60 points into Magicka, uh, we'll see that uh, this number here changes, this value changes. And then for food, uh, you can put down either Clockwork, Witch, or Blue Food. I have it all noted down here in the notes. You have to use the exact wording in order for it to populate correctly. And it'll populate this field here. You can see here, uh, this is why you have to use the exact wording. And then the gear bonuses, uh, basically the number of max magicka bonuses that you have on your gear. So for example, Necropotence has three, so you would put three if you're wearing Necropotence and no other uh, max magicka boosts here. So you can see here we have five, and a lot of this is assuming that you have all gold. So you have gold enchants, you have gold armor, all of your p armor pieces are gold, you have gold weapons, everything is gold. If nothing, uh, if this is not true, if you have like one uh, purple piece, uh, then this actually will not work. So this is basically an idealized scenario. Uh, so if you want to figure it out for your specific character, then you will have to manually enter uh, the bonuses uh, into the cell specified. So for example, if you had purple necropotence, uh, then you will not have 1096 as your max magicka bonus. So instead, you will have to basically add all those up and then manually enter it here. So you'll be replacing this formula right here because this is based off of you have all gold uh, for that particular armor set. Then you have your max magicka multiplier here and I listed out all of them uh, here in the notes section so you just add them all up and you uh, may put them down here. You can assume more horns active, racial passives, things like that. Uh, enchants, uh, so this is the number of large pieces you have uh, and then this is the number of small pieces you have. You just put down how many large and small pieces you have that have mag magicka enchants. How many arcanes you have? Again, this is assuming you have gold enchants or gold jewelry pieces, I should say. If they're not gold, then you will have to manually replace uh, this formula here. Whether or not you're running Necropotence or Destruction Mastery. Uh, so again, you need to put down the exact wording, Necro or Destruction Mastery. If you're not wearing either, then you can just leave it blank. And then how many large infused pieces you have. So if, let's say you have uh, two inf you have two enchants here, right? And then you have two infused pieces, you would go uh, two here, and then it just adds the additional uh, magicka you would get. So you get 173 additional max magicka uh, for each infused large piece. Um, so that basically just takes that there. Uh, and then obviously you would change this. This is the number of divine pieces. This would only be five divine pieces instead. Uh, so that's basically what you have to, to use. And then that'll give you the um, final max magicka here, which is your max magicka pool. This is only an approximation. It's not going to be exact, uh, but it's close enough uh, to, for our purposes to be able to determine which one's going to be better. Then I also did it with the mage because some people were asking, well, what about the mage? Uh, so this is just basically adding on the mage monus instead. And this column is spell damage. So get pretty self-explanatory. Gold weapon. Uh, so if you don't have gold, then you will need to replace this with the purple weapon. Nern, either yes or no, and then if you have yes, it'll change it to 200. Spell damage enchants, uh, how many you have in total. 
So you have three spell damage enchants, you put down three and it adds it all up. Again, this is assuming you have gold enchants. So if you have purple enchants, manually change this. If you have any infused, uh, put down how many infused you have and then that'll change it here. Infused adds 104, so that's where that number comes from there in the formula up top there in the formula page. How much spell damage armor bonuses you have. So for example, if you are running Moon Dancer, you have one spell damage bonus there. So you put one there and that gives you an additional 129. Again, this is assuming you have all gold for that armor set. Uh, so if you don't have a gold, then you will need to manually update this yourself. Berserker uptime. So this is going to basically, you need to have a parse active, whether that's a dummy parse or a raid parse. So you have a berserker uptime. So this has to be between zero and one. So this is a percentage. So for example, if your berserker uptime was 50%, it would be 0 0.5. And then that, that basically puts down the, um, the average spell damage boost here. We're using burning spell weave. Burning spell weave uptime here it has to be between 0 and 0 0.66. Again, if it's like 54%, then you put 0 0.54 and you put that there. Sororia average stack. So this is if you are using Sororia. Uh, so this can be a number between 0 and 20. Uh, so for example, if you have 10 average stacks in Sororia, then you'll have 10 on average. Uh, this is basically going to be more or less a guesstimate. Uh, uh, you know, if you're able to maintain 20 stacks, then great, go for 20 stacks. Uh, but otherwise, you're going to have to play around with this. Uh, generally speaking, if you're if you put down 10, that's a pretty good approximation. Uh, but it's going to change depending on the, the trial specifically. Uh, this is a very difficult number to estimate, so just use the best uh, to your ability. And again, this is going to be dependent on uh, the uh, rate parts is going to be best uh, in order to put in these uptimes. Major courage uptime, self-explanatory. How much uptime you have on major courage? Uh, between 0 and 1, if you have, again, 50%, then it's 0 0.5 and so on, and it'll put the average here. Spell damage multipliers, and then again, I have listed all the uh, ones here. So for Magicka, it's basically minor, major, minor sorcery, and then expert mage for sorcerers. And then Divine's pieces, again, listed down here. Then we have the final spell damage with the apprentice, that's the first number, and then the final spell damage without the apprentice, and that's going to be listed right here. And let's take it. This will these these uh, the final max magicka final spell damage. All of these fields will auto populate depending on uh, what you have changed here. So, for example, if we say we have five divine pieces, you'll see there that the final spell damage here with the apprentice did change uh, dynamically. So it will auto update. This last column here is just looking at crit modifiers. Uh, so without the thief, uh, you have average crit chance. Again, you will have to take the mean crit chance from the combat metrics report. And then average crit damage, uh, again, take the mean crit damage from combat metrics report. So you will, again, have to have a parse, preferably a raid parse. I did list all the sources of crit damage modifiers here. So if you want to do an idealized parse, you can just add these all up however you'd like. Um, then this uh, results in your crit modifier. So your crit modifier is basically these two multiplied together, and then you add one. Uh, and then we basically auto-populate the next uh, set of cells if you as if you had the thief minus active so this will auto populate depending on if you have the thief uh, this will take in consideration how many divine pieces you have so this will auto populate based on e32 which is um, this one right here so you will need to make sure this is uh, active uh, the same so that's just something you want to keep in mind here so it'll auto populate so the thief may give you an additional 7% crit chance base and then it just like multiplies it based on how many divine pieces you have uh, so it'll auto populate uh, this and it will assume you have the same average crit damage because we, we this is assuming you're comparing uh, You know which minus is best so you have the exact same crit damage then it calculates out the crit modifier again Then I do have a damage difference. So this is actually how much damage uh, Percentage DPS you should increase uh, if you are using the thief instead of uh, uh, Without the thief uh, so if you're using something like the lover for instance, so this, this is not account for your apprentice. This is purely uh, without thief versus thief uh, without assuming the apprentice. Where the apprentice comes into play is over here. So we have, so this is just copy paste for our crit modifiers. We have an effective magic pool. So you can see here we take 10.5, multiply it by our spell damage. Because remember 10.5 uh, max magicka is equal to one spell damage. So if we reverse it, we multiply spell damage by 10.5. That gives us the uh, effective uh, max magicka that is the equivalent of the spell damage that we see let me just add it to our actual max magicka and that's going to be our effective magicka pool so this is uh, with the apprentice and then we have max magicka pool without the apprentice 
And then we have our Max Magicka pool with the mage. And then of course, since we're using the mage Mundus, that goes without saying, we're not, we don't have the apprentice. So this is with mage, without apprentice. And then uh, because enchants damage and proc set damage are not affected by spell damage, we need to take that into consideration. So the percentage of damage that comes from enchants and proc sets, again, from a combat metrics parse, ideally a raid parse, that'll go into this cell here. And then you will be able to calculate out the percentage increase from the apprentice and the percentage increase from the mage that you will see if you are switching from a non-thief, non-apprentice, non-mage Mundus, so for example, the lover, to the apprentice. Uh, or rather, not the lover, like let's say uh, the tower or something, basically like a max health, uh, or, or no Mundus. Uh, that's the amount of DPS increase you should see percentage-wise from the apprentice. So this is basically taking, uh, if you take a look here at the um, formula itself, you're basically taking your effective Max Magicka pool with the Apprentice, subtracting it from the Max Magicka pool from without the Apprentice, figuring out the percentage difference, so that is uh, this portion of the equation here, and then uh, you are multiplying it by uh, an adjustment. You're basically adjusting this percentage based on the amount of damage that is not affected by it. So in this case, 12.5% uh, of our damage did not come from enchants, came from enchants and proc sets. So we take that away from one and we multiply that by the percentage difference and that gives us our final percentage increase from using the apprentice, uh, assuming you're not using any Mundus stones at all. So this particular build that I have right here is actually uh, something I calculated out for a pet sork build. Uh, so this is a pet sork build running necropotence and um, what are we running? Necropotence and I believe Mother Sorrow. Uh, so that's where all this is coming from. Uh, and then I kind of just uh, adjusted for crit chance uh, here. So that's our mean crit chance and our. Uh, being crit damage modifier here and I was assuming that we did have major minor sorcery up as well as expert mate this is on our front bar only and here I did assume that we did have warhorn active so this is kind of uh, an assumption uh, and so you can see here that if we were going from no mundus to the apprentice we gain 5.3 percent dps if we are going from no mundus to the mage we get about 4.4 percent additional dps now for the thief, we have to take into consideration non-crit sources. So this would be, for example, uh, Monster Helm sets. If you're a Templar and using Purifying Light, Purifying Light, take that into consideration and basically the exact same thing for the thief. Calculate out the percentage difference and then um, basically uh, adjust accordingly for the percentage of damage coming from non-crit sources. And then uh, this is the amount of DPS we would see from going from no Mundus to the Thief. So we can see here that we get 5.65% DPS increase using the Thief if we go in from no Mundus. So this is higher than the percentage increase from the Apprentice. It's not by much. It's about, uh, in this case, it's only about a 0.32% increase. Uh, so if you're pulling, let's say, 40k uh, with the Apprentice, with the Thief, you'd be only pulling, like, let's say, uh, let me see. So 40k, a uh, 0.3 would only be about like a 200, uh, even less than that. It'd be like 130 additional DPS. So it's a very small increase. But for you min maxers out there, for those of you guys who really, really want to push the absolute most DPS out of your class, the thief is going to beat out the apprentice in pretty much every single scenario. Magnet blades, mag sorks, pet, non-pet. Um, it pretty much every single magicka dps class you will be running the thief instead of the apprentice if you want to min max there um and so I, yeah lzh did it for magic night blades i did this here for pet sorks because somebody was asking well what about pet sorks um and this is basically uh what i got so my results corrob collab corroborate uh they lined up with LZH's results. Um, LZH did share uh the math that he did for magic night blades and i basically took a look at what I was doing with this spreadsheet and our numbers did line up very nicely. Uh, there were a couple of minor differences, uh, but they were very small. Uh, so uh, our results pretty much uh, are in line with each other. So uh, yeah, if you are running Magic DPS, uh, swap over to the Thief if you want to push out a little bit more DPS. Like I said, it's very small. The greatest difference that I saw was like 0.5, 0.6%, which if you're pulling 40K, remember 0.5% uh, is gonna be only 200 DPS. Uh, so it's, it's not that big of a difference uh, overall. Uh, so you can stick with the Apprentice if you'd like, but if you really, really wanna squeeze out every last bit of DPS, then stick with the Thief instead. Uh, so I will have that uh, uh, on all of my Magicka DPS builds in the description. I will not be re-recording it because that's uh, a lot of time and uh, time is a precious resource to me. 
Uh, so instead, this is kind of the substitute for that. And also kind of explaining why the thief is going to be better than the apprentice, but the math behind it. Uh, and again, I will have a description uh, down in the description below a link to this spreadsheet. Uh, you will need to save it under your own Google Drive as a new spreadsheet in order to edit it. Uh, if you just click on the link, it'll only have the uh, view option. So you will not be able to edit this sheet uh, if you click that link. So you will need to save it as a new sheet in order to edit it uh, and to play around with it yourself. And I do have uh, also a stamina version here. If you also want to look at how uh, stamina stacks up um, using the warrior, the tower, and the thief. Uh, spoiler alert, uh, the warrior wins out instead of the thief in pretty much every single scenario. Um, this this sheet uh, is, can pretty much be ignored because most stamina DPS are running the lover instead of the warrior. Uh, but if you are debating, if you are using twice bang snake instead of reliquin, uh, then you will be using the, the either the warrior or the thief instead. Uh, so that's it's still useful, uh, but not quite as useful as the magicka version uh, spreadsheet uh, here. So that is it for this video. Hope you guys found it informative. Um, and again, apologies uh, that I, I didn't update my, my build videos. Uh, so this will have to suffice. Uh, hopefully this will be a little bit more informative besides just me re-recording build videos so you guys actually have the understanding of the math behind it. If you have any questions about this, feel please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. I'll try to get back to them as soon as I can. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will sh see you guys in the next dungeon.